Welcome to what I guess is going to be Jet Set Radio on Second Thought. And no surge or fluke for this one. I instead. I'm here. I, yeah. I instead have an Irishman. A happy yes. Irishman. Uh, happy is subjective. Well, you're probably quite tired and also quite nervous given that, you know, Eurogamer is just around the corner. Thanks for reminding me. I just about put it out of my head for the entire day. It's right, like Eurogamer, where you'll be doing interviews in front of a camera and you'll be like wandering around in large groups of people and having to deal with annoyance and heat and nerds. And you. And me. <laughs> Bossing you around, telling you what to do. Yeah, it should, uh, it should be fun all the same. Yeah, it should. So, Jet Set Radio on PC. Well, Jet Set Radio HD as it's basically. Yes. I heard this was coming out and I did have to take a moment and just be happy because this is one of like the staple games of my childhood when I had my Dreamcast. It was just Jet Set Radio. Yeah. For me, it seemed to come quite quietly though. It was, what, is it in the re-release? Yeah, it was... I, I mean, there, there was the big hype up and it was like, Jet Set Radio HD, holy crap, it's coming to the PC and... It's going to be awesome, and it's basically updated and looks fancy and isn't going to, you know, look like the underside of my balls, and yeah. And then they kind of just went quietly and launched it. Yeah, I did notice that. There was a bit of hype on the PSN for that version. It had a nice big splash screen on the store for a while, but it was fairly quiet overall. I mean... I forgot that it was coming out on PC up until Steam was like, hey, you finished playing a game, let me show you ads. Here's Jet Set Radio. I didn't even get that far. Literally, like, the second it hit, someone poked me on Steam, I was like, why haven't you bought Jet Set Radio yet? And it was like, what? And they were like, it's out. And it was like, what? And it was like, yeah, it's out, go buy it in the store. And I bought it in the store, and the first thing I did was just go, Jet Set Radio! And then I was happy. Nice. And then I got uh, into the game, and I was slightly less happy. It's a pretty faithful recreation, but it also brings the horrible controls with it. Yeah, like this is the problem. It, it seems to have created the original a bit too perfectly. The balls controls are there. Yeah, I don't know. The um, I did have the same problem I had when I used to play it with the Dreamcast controller. Was I think I could make a jump, but then I'd end up just hitting a wall. There's quite a lot of that on. I think the next bit of this footage, as far as I'm aware, I do two levels. Yeah, I had a quick look through it and it does come up a bit. But then again, anyone who plays the game at any point in time, unless they're godly, they're going to have that problem I for at least the first level or two. Yeah, I, it, I'll tell you what though, the tutorial took me longer than it should have for a tutorial. How could it take you? It's like, okay, skate forward, turn a corner. Well, okay, next part. It was, it was, a bit of a it was grind a, and jump. It was a cutscene, and it was like, hey, follow me. And I was half paying attention to it. And then yeah. I failed. And then, like, I, I skipped the cutscene and tried to work out what I needed to do. And then I actually watched the cutscene. <laughs> so it's my ineptitude more than anything else. But there was yeah. no indication once I was in the level of anything that I was meant to do. Not even, like, the direction I was meant to take. But the game does have a lot of that anyway. I mean, it doesn't even have any form of map or overlay to say when you're trying to track down what you need to tag, where you need to go. If there's one left on a level, you can spend quite a long time just trying to find that one spot. Yeah, and I did do that more than once. Quite a yeah. few friggin' times, to be honest. Oh god, am I gonna get away or am I gonna get shot? No, I get away. Success. Uh, that's the one thing I didn't want to see coming back, it was just getting chased. But what do you do? I, I don't know. Like I, I didn't mind getting chased that much. The one thing that irritated me was uh, the next level. The guys on the bikes, like the the enemy. Uh, I guess I guess it's AI, but it's not. There there isn't really an AI in this game. More not as, really. more as there is a when you land on the ground everything will head directly towards you. There is no thinking in it. There is no intelligence. It is just a case of essentially a marker happens on you, camera bugs, and everything just kind of zergs you. Yeah, pretty much. And that you can learn like how to use that to your advantage. Oh, where yes. 
you just kind of, if you can get across the rooftops to another part of the city, you have about a minute before they track you down. Yeah, but it was still kind of interesting to see on the next one with the, the guys with the bikes, where it was just a case of the, the AI was non-existent. They, like, you'd think that they would be a bit smarter than that. And it really, I guess I'm kind of reminiscing and I'm seeing the old Jet Set Radio through rose-tinted goggles. Yeah, because I um, I poked a friend of mine who still plays the original on his Dreamcast, and they are that dull in the original as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, the game is how old now? When did it first came out? Um, Back in... About 12 years now? Yeah, back in 2000, wasn't it? Yeah, towards the end of 2000. So the game is over 12 years old. Back then, you didn't see the kind of things we're going on with AI that you do nowadays. Stuff was fairly basic it was and it worked it does serve the purpose fairly well um <laughs> go on get up <laughs> yeah uh, best best bug ever if you just keep jumping you go up the rail when you've got no momentum i was having horrible sonic generations flashbacks during that <laughs> i know exactly what you mean <laughs> oh god i still i still get hate for that but i must admit the game to me feels great in the fact that they have really captured that old feeling of Jet Set Radio. It's wonderful in that regard, but at the same time, it really does remind me of some of the problems that the game had. Which is quite an interesting concept, because you see all these old games that are being remade and HD versions are coming out, and everyone, of course, that played them when they were younger always gets hyped up for them. Like, Tony Hawk's came out, uh, yeah. which was fantastic, and it has one and two in it. And I believe they're bringing three out as DLC. And then you've got, like, I believe they're making HD versions of the Abe games as well. I think so, yeah. And so you. And, and there's more being made than just the ones we mentioned. And it's quite interesting to see all these games. And all the time you get lots of people are like, oh man, I remember playing that game. I loved that game. You never get someone that's like, eh, that game was okay. I liked it, but there were problems. Like mm -hmm. when Jet Set Radio was announced. The first thought in my head was, holy crap, Jet Set Radio! And then, playing it now, it's like, yes, this game is amazing! And then it was like, wow, I just remembered all the problems this game had. <laughs> but that's always a problem you're going to have when you re-release any game from that long ago. Because you do remember the good points, but none of the frustrations that go with it. Yes. No, but sorry, I on. must say, uh, one of my favourite things that they didn't touch in this was the soundtrack. I was really worried they mightn't be able to get the licences for all the soundtrack but it's all in there and it's as fantastic as I remember. It's got some new versions of songs as well, hasn't it? Um, I believe, I believe sure. they got they got the old soundtrack, but I think they put in some new stuff. Or no, I know that they've brought stuff in from all the different versions. Yeah. But I think they have got some new stuff as well. Also, I, ha I have to admit, uh, on the subject of music, the music that is currently playing with this footage is not actually the Jet Set Radio soundtrack, because copyright lull. So, um, yeah. the game that's currently, uh, well, the music that's currently supporting this game is from Hamster, who's awesome and does, well, allows us kindly to use his music for all of our other stuff. So, of course, we will submit a link to him, and it fits quite well. Yeah, it... It does fit. It has the same kind of up-tempo electronic sounds that the original soundtrack did have. Yeah. Now, this level, I suck massive amounts of ass on. I'm going to warn you now, <laughs> and I'm expecting you to yell at me a few times while we're still talking. So, the, red, the, the music that actually does come with the game, it's fantastic. I mean, you have got the old songs on that. And it's quite yeah. interesting to see the... Not only have they got songs from the Dreamcast version and the PAL version, but they've also got songs from, I believe, the Japanese version? Well, the Japanese one had most of the same soundtrack as the European one, but the metal one actually had some metal songs on there as well, and I think they're included. Yeah, but there were a few songs that were only on the Japanese version. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, so if they do have the complete soundtrack in this, that's awesome. Yes. Ow, my face. So, I spent most of the first few minutes of this level wondering where the hell I was meant to go, then wondering if the green arrows had anything to do with what I was meant to be doing. Nope. No. 
And then I just kind of found the street and was like, yeah, holy crap, the street. And then I believe the one of the first things I do is I run up the street and leave the level. <laughs> Uh, there, there are a lot of um, little problems, especially with this level. I can remember getting stuck in the playground. The camera just freaked out like crazy. Yeah, there you go. I just randomly leave, and it's like, whoops. <laughs> Brilliant. So, I know with uh, with the re-release of this, I would love to see them go on and do um, Jet Set Radio Future as well. If like provided this does well. No, I tell you what game I want to see on the PC. What? Parappa the Rapper. Oh wow, that would be amazing. I don't know, Jet Set Radio Future or Parappa the Rapper? Parappa the Rapper, man. Not only do you have the level where you're cooking, but there's also the one where you're trying to find a toilet to use. Oh god, I'd forgotten that. <laughs> Which is a fantastic level. But you could go on, like, we could go on for quite a long time just kind of reminiscing about old games with the cell shaded style that would still work now. Because you gotta admit, the cell shaded style this game used, it still does look pretty good today. I mean, the texture resolutions are a little low, but yeah, it does look good. That, that's one of the great things that really works for the advantage of cell shading. It it ages well. Yeah. Essentially, uh, it's like a wine in some regards. And uh, you know, it it shows its age, but not to a point where it puts you off. Yeah, definitely, and it does work to the strength of a lot of any older games that want to like, come out again. I mean, Tony Hawk's did look a little bit dated, the re-release of that, Yes, this does look very good. Now, it's quite interesting to see that when they were creating this, of course, they took uh, the, I believe it was the Dreamcast version, and they put extra stuff into it that was in the other one, didn't they? Uh, I think that's the way they did it, yeah. Yeah. So it's rather interesting to see that. I mean, it's quite nice that instead of just releasing the old original game, they have paid that attention to detail and really kind of delivered to the fans. And they'd had a nice little competition as well to like design your own graffiti when they were working on this, and some of it has made it into the game, which is a nice touch as well. And of course, they, they do have to put the warning at the beginning of the game, which is uh, graffiti is art, but it's also vandalism. Yeah, <laughs> I did find that uh, somewhat amusing. I found it quite amusing the second time, because the first time it went so fast that I couldn't actually see it. <laughs> you just kind of like, get me into the game now. <laughs> yes, but the fact that you can actually uh, create your own graffiti, and there's leaderboards as well. There's the online leaderboards and everything. Bam, bike to the face. Nice. It really is trying to move into that aspect of a lot of games these days do have achievements attached to them. They do have that social aspect because of the, the logic of, you know, always on and everyone's always connected yeah. and friends and all this stuff. It's, it's really awesome that they've done that. But again, I don't know. I love the game. I love the original concept. I remember spending more time than I should have playing Jet Set Radio instead of doing my homework growing up. Wow, <laughs> 12 years ago. How old was I 12 years ago? 14. I was in high school then, I think. It's about the right age, yeah. isn't it? 14, high school? Um, I don't know. Our school system is a little bit different. I was 12, so I was just going into secondary school. Yeah. So, it was, you know, okay, so I've spent more time than... Playing. There go the bikes randomly off the edge. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about, about. There's no AI. They just kind of... Yeah, and if you turned around, they weren't actually there, because when they go off the edge, they just disappear. Yes. So, yeah. You know, I spent more time playing this game than I should have, and it's fantastic and it's great to have this wonderful moment back from my childhood but at the same time i realized the flaws that the game has it's boring i'm gonna just say it it really is like i was playing this for 20 minutes for the the video i've played it for about an hour and a half after that and i'm still play i played a bit more of it earlier but it every time i play it it feels way longer than i've actually been playing it it just yeah, seems to I got that impression as well when on. I was playing. Honestly, when I was playing this, um, I ended up wanting to go and play Skitchen simply for an upgrade system with Blades because there isn't a huge amount to do other than just play the level. I mean, there's no progression to speak of in Jet Set Radio apart from getting new graffiti. Yeah, and it's quite an interesting game in that regard. I mean, 
everyone has so much, you know, passion for it and love for it, and they were like, holy crap, yes, Jet Set Radio is coming back out. And it's nice that it came out at the price it did, because it's only six pounds, you know? So it's not yeah. a gigantic wallet hole punch. But at the same time, it's not that fantastic a game. It's but enjoyable it for what it is. Yeah, that's the thing. It's enjoyable for what it is, but what it is is really simple. And it's more just a kind of flashback to, you know, an, a better time in air quotes. I'm making the air quotes here, but you can't see them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, air quotes. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just a case of, you know, it's just a flashback to a better time and just kind of going, hey, Jet Set Radio, do you remember that game? It was awesome. And, you know, it's great that they brought out for a generation that never got to play it and was like, can basically experience it and be like, yeah, this game is cool. But it's so simple. And it's so boring in places. And it's so dull. Because all you do is you just go around this level. You have to try and find the graffiti places. You mark them up. And then that's it. You move on. But... Your you... face. Yes. I did get an achievement, though. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> but there's nothing more to it. There's no real reason to keep going back on and doing a level unless you're into the score attack kind of style of thing and even and the online the online leaderboards do help that a little bit because people out there there yeah. are a lot of people that love score attacks but there are better games in that regard there are so i don't i would i would agree with you on the most part it is fairly dull once you get over the initial oh i'm reliving my childhood playing jet set radio again yes i mean i would if there was an option to buy the game and the soundtrack, I would have just bought it and put the soundtrack on my MP3 player. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the main reasons to play this game, in my opinion, would be the soundtrack. You know, the the game is a fantastic... Well, it, it's a fantastic nostalgia moment. You get to geek out over playing a game that you played 12 years ago that was great fun and that you had fantastic memories playing. But for me, now that I've played it, some of the... Like, it's... One of those things that it was such a beautiful crystallized moment of, you know, holy crap, I remember spending my time playing that as a kid. That I wish I'd left it alone. Hmm. I'm not really getting that myself. I mean, what, I'm, what I got out of playing it is, uh, when I was playing it, this game was fantastic. I mean, it was my favorite game for about two, three months. Yeah. Um, but playing it now, I just kind of realized how far, like, what makes a good game has come. Yeah. And I still enjoyed it for when I, the time I play it, but I don't know how much I'm going to be picking it up to play it more, you know? Yeah, I, I can I can understand that. For me, it's a bit different. Like, like I said, it's really a case of, I wish I'd just left alone that moment. It's like... Um, what, what's, a, what's a good example that I can think of? Watching a TV show as a kid and being like, oh, I remember that, it was fantastic. You go back and watch it as an adult and it's absolute pants. Like, I can't say I'm experiencing that because right now I'm rewatching Pokemon and it's amazing. Pokemon is different, but there was a Starship <laughs> Starship Troopers cartoon that I remember watching before I went to school, and it was brilliant and amazing. And I tried watching it again recently, and it's absolutely boring as all hell. And I just cannot watch it. I cannot stomach it. And there are, okay. I think Diablo 2 is another great example of that in a way. It's like people played Diablo 2 when it first came out and you know they loved it but I know a lot of guys in the community that went back to try and play Diablo 2 before D3 came out and they were like I can't play it it's too ugly it's just I cannot get into that game and I don't know why I liked it in the first place and how I could actually put up with looking at it it's different because you know that's graphical rather than the yeah. actual gameplay itself but it's still that kind of I have these fantastic moments that I want to go back and experience again and Alka and yeah, I can't. I suppose that really depends on the person because some people, like, they can just go back to older games and enjoy them. I mean... Yeah, I'm unfortunately before, not one of them. Before D3 came out, I went back to play Diablo 2 with um, with some people and they they hated it, so I just kept on going. And yeah. I think when D3 came out, my paladin was level 87. Right. Well, we're running out of time, so we should wrap yeah. this up. So, if you have any questions, queries, or comments, leave them where? Below. And from myself, Kel, and everyone else at Elden 3, we hope you enjoyed Jet Set Radio video, and we'll catch you for the next one. Peace. Stay awesome.